Good morning. Welcome to St. Anthony's. Today is the 21st of April, Wednesday of the third week of Easter. Today's Mass is offered for Barbara Mosley, Dave Rich Creek, Lori Fisher, and all who suffer from cancer. Today we memorialize St. Anselm, Bishop, Doctor. What St. Augustine was for the church in the fifth century and subsequently, St. Anselm of Canterbury was for the 11th century and thereafter. Both are noted for their original and depth of thought. Like St. Augustine, Anselm was an original and an independent thinker. Admired as a skillful teacher, patient and gentle as abbot and as bishop. Anselm's biographer, Eadmere, says that his whole life was characterized by benevolence, kindness, love, gentleness, meekness, pardon, smiling exhortation, and these same characteristics are found in his writings. These are the bare facts of his life. He was born in Piedmont in Northern Italy in 1033, and as a young man was indifferent toward religion. Even though he wanted to enter a monastery at the age of 15, his father objected, so he went on as indifferent as before. Finally, at age 27, he entered the famous Benedictine Monastery at Beck in Normandy. Within three years, he was prior, and 15 years after that, he was elected abbot. He was then 45 years old. At age 60, he became Archbishop of Canterbury. Anselm is, so to speak, two men. He is a teacher of minds and a father of souls. As teacher, he influenced philosophy and theology. He believed that the mystery of the triune God is so sublime that it transcends all the vision of the human intellect. It is enough for Anselm to be secure in the knowledge that God is, and that what we do know of God is without contradiction of any other reason. His best theological work is probably Cordeus Homo, Why God Became Man. And he believed more in the compelling force of what he called necessary reasons than in an appeal to an authority. He preferred analogies to images. Probably for most of us today, we are enriched by Anselm, the father of souls. As a spiritual father, he is described as very traditional, very Benedictine, devoted to the rule and to contemplation. As an ascetic theologian, theology is for him faith seeking understanding. He wrote, I believe that I may understand, and what is more, I believe that unless I do believe, I shall not understand. He wrote that to pray, one must first withdraw or go apart. Come now, little man, turn aside for a while from your daily employment. Escape for a moment from the tumult of your thoughts. Enter into the inner chamber of your soul. Shut out everything except God and that which can help you in seeking him. And when you have shut the door, seek him. The next step is to ask for the help of God. Teach me to seek you, Anselm said of his writings on prayer, I have written. From the viewpoint of someone trying to raise his mind to contemplation of God and seeking to understand what he believes. 
A longer quotation from the Proslogion, which is found in the Office of Readings today, perhaps gives a better appreciation of the ascetical side of Saint Anselm. Surely, Lord, inaccessible light is your dwelling place, for no one apart from yourself can enter into it and fully comprehend you. If I fail to see this light, it is simply because it is too bright for me. This light in which you dwell, Lord, is beyond my understanding. It is so brilliant that I cannot bear it. I cannot turn my mind's eyes toward it for any length of time. I am dazzled by its brightness, amazed by its grandeur, overwhelmed by its immensity, bewildered by its abundance. You are everywhere in your entirety, and yet I do not see you. In you I move and have my being, and yet I cannot approach you. You are within me, and yet I do not perceive you. We are blessed that we have such rich thought to reflect on in our search for God. Like St. Anselm, we pray that our faith will lead us to understanding of the sublime truths that God has revealed. St. Anselm died in 1109 after ministering as Archbishop of Canterbury for 16 years. He vigorously defended the freedom of the church against interference by monarchs. He was diligent in his care for the poor, and he was the first theologian to denounce the slave trade, which he called the selling of men like cattle. He was declared a doctor of the church in 1720. It is interesting to note, and it tells us of the lasting esteem for Anselm, that in Dante's Paradiso, he is found among the spirits of light and power next to St. John Chrysostom. Our opening hymn is number 163, Alleluia, Love is Alive, 163. Oh, God, now 
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Everyone who believes in the Son has eternal life. And I shall raise him on the last day, says the Lord. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. But I told you that although you have seen me, you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me. Because I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. When you think of bread, what do you think of? Food. Mm -hmm. Food. Blood. Blood. Bread. Yeah. Bread. I, I thought you said bread. No, br bread. Sorry. <laughs> Food. Basic Food. sustenance of life. Oh. It's a basic supplement. I mean, most of us don't have. Yeah, you know, it's a basic supplement of life. It's what. It's a, it's a wonderful dish to meal to fill you up. It has carbs and it's, it's good for you. And today Jesus is, is described himself as not just any bread, but of the bread of life, the basic substance of life that keeps us going. And that should tell us something about how important Jesus should be to us. But yet oftentimes, we lose sight of that because I wonder how many people get really excited about bread. Probably not too many, right? Probably not. We just think it's a side dish. You know, it's something when you you gotta have when you have a sandwich. I mean, it's a little bit hard to have a sandwich without bread or you know many other dish. It's kind of important to have bread in there, especially picking sandwich, like I said, or hot dog or hamburger. Those are important part of it. To have a complete meal, you gotta have that. And that should tell you something about Jesus in our life, that he's the basic sustenance of life, whether we realize it or not. He is not only keeps us physically alive, but also spiritually alive. And you know, the amazing thing is sometimes when we think of Eucharistic miracle, we think of many in the 13th century. Well, recently was only 2013 in Poland. Christmas 2013 in Poland, Christmas Mass was celebrated, and the host was accidentally dropped on the floor. Well, they didn't know what to do, so they put the host in the, in the water. And soon enough, later on, the host was bleeding. And of course, everyone was shocked. And of course, they brought to, to have an examined to see, what, is this really blood, or was it just a stain? What's going on here? And they discovered that was real human blood. And later on, over time, the host changed to be heart muscle they discovered. Not just any heart muscle, but a heart that, that underwent stress, lack of oxygen. And when Jesus was hanging on the cross, what happened to his heart? There was stress hanging like this. You could have a hard time breathing. The same medical condition that this piece of uh, host that's now slowly turning into a human heart, a human flesh. 
And that should tell you something that God's miracle, I don't know about you, but it's, you know, it's a miracle for me that he could intervene in our life. And it begs the question, what is he trying to tell us? That the host is really him. Yeah, it's the real presence of, of, of him in our life. It's just that sometimes we perhaps need a little reminder that this is truly Jesus. Jesus who keeps us alive. And Jesus is always there with us in our life, whether we recognize it or not. And as I say, Anselm today reminds us, I believe so that I understand. And you know, the great miracle of the Eucharist for me is not the host changing into the body and blood of Christ. But you know what the great miracle that I see for each Mass is? Any idea what that is? Yes, that's a great miracle. Don't, I don't want to undermine that by any means. The effects of the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. The effects of it in your life and in my life. And it kind of keeps us going and how it transforms our life. That I see week after week, people, amazing people who have done incredible, difficult things in their life. And yet suffer, I know greatly. But yet in the midst of that suffering is great joy. And oftentimes, you know, God is in each and every life that we that we often that we that God allows us a glimpse into His miracle working in our life, as we see in each other's life. Well, recently, a teenager, believe it or not, at the age of nineteen, Maddie, in Oklahoma, accidentally, I don't know how it happened, moved into a retirement home. Now, these days, when you move, when you move. You can apply online. Well, it, it took her a while, a week later, for her to realize, like, wait a minute, how come everyone here is a lot older than I am? At the age of 19, I think we're supposed to be a little bit clueless, I know. You know, like, how the heck did you not know that you live in a retirement home? Well, she didn't. I mean, apparently, they have an equal opportunity housing law there that required, that doesn't discriminate against age. And they took her in, but she didn't know that. She applied everything online, and she just moved in. She was busy working as a nurse assistant, and by the time she got home, she said, you know, I noticed that everyone after a while is a lot older than I am. I just didn't understand why until I saw the signs around the buildings that said, retirement home. <laughs> and it kind of occurred to her, ah, oh, so this is why. And so, she, you know, doing, you know what typically young people do when they, they experience in their life, when they have new experiences, what do they typically do? 19 year old. What do they do? Go on Facebook. Yes, go on Facebook. Post every aspect of the life. That's what she did. She got hundreds of thousands of followers. All of a sudden, young people are shocked. Like, what? How did that happen? What is it like? People ask. Well, she said, well, I don't have to, I don't have to tell, I mean, I don't know how to tell you this, but I felt like I have so many grandparents all of a sudden. <laughs> they didn't, you know, I didn't realize that I really liked it here. That all of a sudden, they probably doted on her. Yeah, they doted on her. She was invited to so many meals and snacks and having them over. And she realized that, boy, I really like quiet. One thing I, you know, I realized that, boy, when you got home, everyone's asleep. Because she goes, she's, she's working. And she realized, like, hey, this is not a bad thing, a mistake. But it turned out to be quite a good mistake. And, you know, throughout her mistake of posting this, young people were kind of amazed that. You know, because a lot of young people these days, they never really interact with an older crowd. Yeah. You know, a lot of young people don't hang around with older people. I mean, this is a rare opportunity to see what it's like to interact with older folks, as, they, as she calls it, the old folks' home. Mm -hmm. That she's among them, and she reminds that, you know, this is a fun group to be in. <laughs> and the interesting thing about all this is that, as it turns out for her, it says she planned to continue staying there. She says, I like it, I'm gonna stay. If they let me stay, I'll continue to stay. Mm -hmm. And in our life, when you think about it, we have so much to offer each other. And this young woman's mistake turned out to be a blessing, not only for her, but for many other young people who never chance, perhaps, have a lot of stereotypes, a lot of, preconceived notion 
about other people they don't encounter, like the older folks. But through the young person, you know, under, slowly understanding of, all, of, all, of life together, she understands there's so much to learn from one another. And in our own life too, when we have a deep faith and of Christ in our life and in one another's life, we gain a deeper appreciation of one another, of our marriages, of our relationship. Christ is indeed in our midst. And that should transform our relationship when you think about it, shouldn't it? If you see Christ in your brother and sister, in your husband, in your children. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to reflect on your own life. What the bread of life means to you. Because when you think about it, the bread of life isn't only the, the real presence of, of God, the, the host. What is it also about? Could the bread of life be one another? Mother, parents to their children, neighbors to one another, neighbors, friends with friends who feed one another by caring for each other. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to reflect on one another in your, each other's life, that how we in our life, because we have been privileged to receive Jesus, we become the bread of life for one another. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's love and mercy, let us turn to now all our needs and all the needs of the world. For Pope Francis, for Alexander, our bishop, and all our priests, bishops, and deacons, may God's grace be upon them to help to lead and guide their people to everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For each and every one of us, may we always recognize the true presence of Christ in our life and Christ in one another, that in doing so, may we treat each other with reverence and respect. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us also pray for all those who are gravely suffering, that through God's mercy and through our generosity and kindness may we bring a source of bring us so be a source of comfort for one another we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer let us also pray for all the prayers and concerns and worries that lie deep within our hearts we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer let us also pray for all our brothers and sisters who have gone before us trusting and believing god's love and mercy we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer loving compassionate father accept the prayers of your family gathered here Help each and every one of us, Lord, to turn to you, that in doing so, we may experience your love and your mercy. We ask this to Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our preparation of the gifts, again, is number 161. Two were bound for Emmaus. 161. Oh, 
by sin, yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory is in me, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, on the offering we set upon the sacred altar, on the feast day of blessed Anselm, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblation may give honor to your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Live up your hearts. Live up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new. And offer a sure sign of your love, that your saving mystery may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit be called heir to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the, the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance of your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all of us. And with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other sacrifice. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that they shall enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. It was not you who chose me, says the Lord. But I have chosen you and have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Hallelujah. After spiritual communion, Jesus, thank you for coming into our hearts. We welcome you and unite ourselves to you, strengthen us in your love as we await the day we are reunited at the Eucharistic table. Amen. Our communion hymn is number 348, Supper of the Lord. <laughs>
that follow the example of Blessed Anselm. We may strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to share your experience. We have a new uh, bulletin area for guest columnists. And guess who the guest columnist is? Us. Yes, each and every one of you. Why? You have two testimonies to be shared. Yes, you guys have individual. You guys have special testimonies, stories you can share for your that only you can share. I can't share about military life because I was never in the military, and I can see that the Edie and the, and Aggie have been in the, well, you guys were in the military, but in the sense you were married in the military. We were in the military, believe me. Oh, you were in the military. <laughs> My very joke, your husband. Yeah. <laughs> when you marry someone in the military, you marry the army or what, the, the yeah, armed forces with the service. And that's something that, you know, one of the things I know that many, they, many couples in the military struggle with is what? Separation. Separation. And that's something you guys have plenty to speak about. I mean, how do you guys cope with it? I can, I'm, you know, the, in the life in the military has huge amount of divorce, divorces for, for obvious reasons, a lot of stress, move, changes that has to, that, that happens. And I think that's something that you particularly could speak powerfully about, or what it means. Oftentimes, many experiences you guys have shared raising a child um, that is adopted. How does, how do you do that? I mean, these are questions that you can, you know, you. Can, you can share and enrich other people. How do you comfort a friend who's been gone through cancer, or perhaps you've gone through it yourself? How do you, how do you, where do you get your strength? That's something that could be encouraging to others who are struggling with that own life, or perhaps they have a friend who is struggling with that. And if they know, you know, read your testimony, perhaps that would help them in their life to help that friend because they don't know what to say or what to do. So your story sometimes could be very helpful even if it could just help one person, is it worth it? Yes. Yes. It may not change the entire world, but it certainly changed that person. So I just invite you to consider work on it. And if you have, if you're a person who's doesn't, who's not very good with words, writing it out or anything like that, we have a parishioner, Lisa Hoffman, who uh, who likes to write. So if you like to, she can interview you and write in an interview format. So you just, she'll ask you questions. Things you, you know, and then she'll write it out for you. So in format, you know, in the form. So I just invite you that I know each and every one of you have something very precious to offer to someone else. So I just consider invite you doing that. Also, remember the funeral for Diana Funk will be held on Saturday, May the 1st at 11 a.m. Keep that in mind. And also mass intention, please email or snail mail your request to the office. One of the great things you can do for other people is to pray for them. And no greater way to pray than offering the mass in Jesus' name. And when you offer mass, it's Jesus who brings your intention to the Father. So I just invite you to consider doing that. Also, appointments, confessions are available by appointment. Please email me. My email address on our webpage and on the back of the bulletin. Also, many thanks for your contribution and generosity to our parish. It makes all of industry possible. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing song is number 567. Join in the dance, uh, verses 1, 2, and 5.
Yeah.